the the reason why I think so many women will gravitate towards Cersei's myth is that like that little hint of misandry we all have because of how men have done us dirty. And so you see her flipping things that are typically feminine worries that we have because we have to be ready for the male gaze. Um, and she, she flips that and makes Percy insecure about those things. And the, the thing yeah. I hate about that is that he is already insecure about all of those things. And yeah. that's what I hate about it is like, that's fine to do to somebody who deserves it, but you're doing it to like the one boy it's not even a man just a boy the one boy who wouldn't who wouldn't treat you this way <laughs> like this is like a boy who loves his mom so much and genuinely like respects women through the course of these books he he doesn't do stuff yeah. like that with women like he just he doesn't and so like it's it's interesting to see like i feel like sometimes people like look at the lines that Percy is saying mm -hmm. and almost like puts like projections of like shitty men onto Percy like they're like oh I don't like that he says that Annabeth is like too pretty and it's like no he's not saying that she's too attractive now and that he doesn't want her to look good it's a thing of like you don't need to be f overly feminine to be feminine and like I always really liked that from the years that I read these books because I don't do any of that feminine stuff I don't like wear makeup or wear clothes like that or do any or like do the normal feminine stuff and it bothers me that a lot of times people think that this is definitely a crossover from like spirituality stuff where they're very <laughs> black and white about gender roles and what like masculine and feminine energy mean and so I don't I like anything that like brings up the fact that being feminine doesn't mean just like wearing makeup and looking pretty or whatever that you don't that's not that's not all that what that means more complex or whatever way of looking at the idea of gender that nuanced yeah like nuanced way of looking at it that annabeth doesn't need to like look pretty and wear a nice dress and have nice hair in order for her to be feminine and for her to be beautiful yeah um, like she looks beautiful without any of that stuff. She doesn't need to be to like make herself look better in that way. So I mean, there's there's kind of already. I would call Annabeth a little bit more androgynous than feminine, but that's mm -hmm. more in relation to her Athena parentage because mm -hmm. I think Athena in ancient times was written to be masculine, um, masculine wisdom rather than feminine wisdom and then they threw in bits of feminine wisdom with like oh leaving is her domain mm -hmm. um you know that there wasn't they didn't consider feminine wisdom and so athena comes off as this like hard you know like masculine woman in a way and i think it i think that annabeth has some of that but i also do think that like some of her journey and some of the things we see her doing with her relationship with Percy is getting in touch with some of those softer, more feminine emotions. And it's kind of cool that a guy gets her to do those. Yeah, like the vulnerability, like yes. that's one of the things that I love about Percy and, and Annabeth's characters is that their gender, like stereotypical roles are swapped. Mm -hmm. Like Percy is the one that is more vulnerable that will has a hard time talking about his feelings but he definitely talks about them more than annabeth does mm -hmm. and annabeth is the one that is more standoffish at the end she's like the one that won't talk to him when she gets upset with him and won't communicate as much with him about what's going on yeah. when it's usually the man that does that sort of role usually the guy is the one that suddenly pulls away and you don't know what's going on and then in like the third act they tell you why they're doing that or whatever and it, so their their roles are very like swapped in that way which i appreciate because it's nice because that's that's just it makes them more like real people instead mm -hmm. of just falling back on like the tropes that have been used seventy thousand times <laughs> yeah what i find with cersei is part of me wants to be sympathetic to this extreme misandry because like men men do suck but yeah with percy and having this character who is our main character, who is our like hero, go through that 
it, it tells us like, okay, but we shouldn't do this to all men, right? I mean, I don't want to be the yes or, you know, the not all men person. But of course, it actually is true. Not all men are awful. It's just sometimes the good men have to pay for the awful men. Yeah. And, and, well, I'll yeah. say that at least. I'm not going to say not all men, but I am going to say that most of those discussions that happen are so simplistic that it's stupid. I feel like I need to say like qualifications when I say this because people are so irrational about that, but I was sexually abused by my dad for mm -hmm. over a decade. So do I have problems with men? Yeah. Do I have problems trusting men? Abs absolutely I do. <laughs> but at the yeah. same time, if me with all of that, all, all of that in like my past can recognize that not all men are are evil like the first like men are also sexually abused i liked the fact that cersei was shown as like just traumatizing the fuck out of a super traumatized 13 year old kid that was terrified like he is like when he when the magic stuff starts working on him he's genuinely scared and she can tell and she's like smiling at him when he's when he's scared <laughs> and so I like the fact that they kind of showed her doing that of being so black and white about that, that she's turning a 13 year old kid into yeah. a guinea pig because she, she is so sure that he's going to be a bad person because he's a boy. People don't know what it means when a woman is being a predator. Like they genuinely are confused when it happens and they don't know what to, they get confused about how to even talk about it because they don't even know what they're looking at because it's so yeah. different from what they're used to, I guarantee you that it happens way more than people want to admit. Because like most things with sexual abuse, especially as children, you don't talk about it for a long time. And you're especially not gonna talk about it if once a year there's a trend on TikTok saying that all men sexually abuse people and nobody else does. Yeah. Like, so you're never gonna tell anybody. It's gonna take her even longer to, for different reasons. Like both of us have a hard time telling people for very different reasons, but that's that's why I like Rick Barton throwing this in there to show her like being so black and white about it that it's just not real. That's not, it would be, life would be much easier if you could just be like, oh, well, if I'm around a woman, then I'm safe. And that's just yeah. like, that's just not true. Her place could be a real sanctuary for women. It really could, you know, like it has the potential to. How many of us saw Wizard of Oz, those little girls and when they go through the wash them, brush up place mm -hmm. and get the makeovers, like all of them, the guys and the girls, you're mm -hmm. like, oh, that looks fun. Like, I want an Oz makeover. <laughs> and, you know, like, there's that potential at her spa that we see that we, you, you know, like Annabeth comes about transformed in a good way. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's almost like an overcorrection, way too mm -hmm. much. And not only that, but like also an overcorrection of a demigod because her, her words to Annabeth are, you could be like me, you could become a witch like me. I was also a demigod. Like we could do, she's a little bit more than a demigod because her mom is a, is a Nereid. So, you know, there's, or I think in some versions, even Hecate, but, uh, or Hecate, I never know how to say that goddess's name. <laughs> me either. Yeah. But, uh, you know, she, I think she did have divine parents on both sides, actually. But anyway, regardless, the point being, like, sorcery, she says, is the answer to be more powerful, to, to be able to control things the way you want. And, like, yeah, it's working okay for her, but is it really, you know? And 